I assume since you clicked on this, you saw part one of this little big town artist analysis and thoroughly enjoyed it. If you haven't seen it, please watch it right now and then come back. Assuming you're all caught up on LBT's first five studio albums, let's get into talking about the rest of the music they've released up to this point and how they've changed it over time while staying true to their origins. Let's get started! Just like their previous album, the 2014 Little Big Town album Painkiller was released through Capital Nashville and produced by Jay Joyce. In 2015, Painkiller was nominated for Album of the Year for both the Academy of Country Music and the Country Music Association. The album was nominated for Best Country Album at the 58th Grammy Awards. Just like Tornado and The Road to Here, Painkiller was certified platinum by the RIAA. First single off of that album, Day Drinking, was sent to country radio on June 9, 2014. This single broke a record when it debuted on country airplay at 32, and it eventually peaked at number two on country airplay. The album's second single, Girl Crush, actually sparked a lot of controversy upon its release in December 2014. When listeners issued complaints misinterpreting the song's lyrics to be about lesbianism, radio stations pulled the song from their playlists. I know how bigoted and horrible that sounds, but the artist did respond to it. To quote Fairchild directly on the matter, that's just shocking to me, the close-mindedness of that, when that's just not what the song was about. But what if it were? It's just a greater issue of listening to a song for what it is. After misunderstandings about what the song was actually about were cleared up, Girl Crush was played on the radio again. Not that it should have ever been pulled in the first place, regardless of what people thought it was about. By May 2015, Girl Crush became Little Big Town's second number one song after Pontoon. The song also gained exposure on The Voice and on the 50th annual ACM Awards and was nominated Single of the Year for the CMAs. Painkiller's title song, its third and final single, was released to country radio on August 24, 2015. On May 24, 2016, Little Big Town announced that they were planning to release a new album. Said album would be released through Capitol Nashville on June 10th. But for this album, LBT got a new executive producer, Pharrell Williams. After years of loyalty to the country genre, Little Big Town decided to take a risk with Wanderlust. Yet another direct quote from band member Karen Fairchild, It's not a country album and it's not like anything we've ever done. It's fun to be spontaneous and put it out there to the fans because we want to and not to overthink it, but just because it has brought us a lot of joy. And we think it will for them as well. So why not? We're going with our gut and putting it out there. It's just music, you know? To summarize Fairchild's quote, LBT's intent wasn't to completely abandon their country tradition on Wanderlust, but to experiment with a mix of country, pop, and R&B for this album, if that makes sense. There was only one single on Wanderlust, and it was track three entitled One of Those Days, which of course served as the album's lead single. But Fairchild did say that while the band was working on Wanderlust, they were also working on a separate country record with their former producer, Jay Joyce. Only four months after the release of Wanderlust, LBT released their single, Better Man. The song was written for Little Big Town by Taylor Swift and would serve as the lead single for their next album, The Breaker. The lyrics were inspired by Swift's sentiments about ending a past relationship, and she claims that while composing the song, she thought of Little Big Town's vocal harmonies and offered to let them sing it. 
Better Man peaked at number one on both the Billboard Country Hot 100 and the Country Air playlist. To help promote The Breaker, LBT had a residency at the Ryman Auditorium in Nashville entitled Little Big Town at the Mother Church, which started on February 24, 2017, the day of The Breaker's release. Other singles on this album include Happy People and When Someone Stops Loving You. Now for Little Big Town's most recent album to date. In 2018, between The Breaker and Nightfall, LBT released a standalone single called Summer Fever, which reached number 29 on Country Airplay. LBT went out on a limb and self-produced Nightfall, albeit with help from Daniel Tashian and Ian Fitchuk. On April 5th, 2019, LBT released Nightfall's lead single, The Daughters, which was nominated for a Grammy Award. This is especially surprising considering that, despite reaching number 29 on Country Airplay and the Billboard Country Hot 100, The Daughters wasn't promoted to the radio. The second album off of Nightfall, Over Drinking, was released on September 8th, 2019. The Nightfall album itself was released on January 17th, 2020. The third and final single on the album, Wine, Beer, Whiskey, was released on June 1st, 2020. When I first heard Little Big Town's Pontoon, I liked the song's instrumentation, four-part harmonies, and the way the lyrics reminded me of a nice boat vacation. But as I eventually heard more LBT songs on the radio and on YouTube, I fell in love with their musical style, which, now that I think about it, is a pretty big part of how I got so much into country music in the first place, in addition to the reasons I mentioned at the beginning of part one. So like I do with most artists I get into, I simply had to listen to all their albums. In doing so, I ended up learning just how much the foursome had been through. From their early lives, to the onset of their career, even to this day. At this point, I have mad respect for Little Big Town, and I hope you do too after listening to my video essay. These guys have been so resilient and they've never given up no matter how hard things got for them. And as a result, they've produced such amazing music all throughout their years. I really hoped you, hope you liked the inaugural video in my artist analysis series. Please leave a comment telling me what other artists you'd like to see future video essays on. And if you haven't already, please like my video and subscribe to my channel to get some more informational and inspiring videos so that I can see you next time.